Joining us live now is a astronomer at large, Fred Watson, who travelled to Texas for the event. Fred, it is great to see you this morning. Thank you so much for your time. So, in celestial parlance, was it a 10-star event? <laughs> yeah, I think it might even have been 11, Pete, because <laughs> um, we had an almost miraculously uh, appropriate clearing of the sky just before the sun was covered completely by the disk of the moon. It was really remarkable. Uh, and the other spectacular thing about this eclipse is, as was kind of mentioned in that uh, in that uh, package you just showed, uh, the timing. It was a lengthy eclipse, 4 minutes 23 seconds here in Texas where we were, and it was gave us time to really savour the, the details of what we were looking at through binoculars uh, and telescopes uh, as the sun was obscured by the moon. And then did you feel the temperature drop as well, Fred? Indeed, that's right. Uh, it was quite a sweaty afternoon until the moon was covering the sun uh, and the temperature did drop. We okay. also noticed uh, the birds uh, sort of putting themselves to bed and other phenomena that you oh, wow. quite commonly see during eclipses. OK, yeah, well, that's some new information I hadn't heard already this morning. So, <laughs> so why, why do you think people are so moved by this, Fred? It's, as, as was mentioned a few minutes ago, it's the rarity of it. Now, they're not actually that rare, these eclipses, but yeah. over any one particular point of the Earth's surface, they are. So, for example, uh, you know, our next one uh, in the Sydney area will be uh, in 2028. Uh, that's quite a long way down the track. Uh, they're, they're relatively rare, but also uh, I think it gives people a sense of the reality of the the cosmic mechanism that drives things like the seasons, the phases of the moon. Most of the time we don't think about this stuff, but when you have an eclipse where the sun, the moon and the earth are in a perfect mm. straight line, uh, then it really galvanises people's awareness. H had, you the, seen one, had you seen one before, Fred? Uh, this was actually my sixth, okay, yes. Okay, uh, you've seen six. Yeah. So, so how did this one compare? I think it's one of the best, I have to say, um, especially with the relief as the clouds cleared. It was also held at a rather nice winery, not very far from oh, Fort okay. Worth, in Texas, where I am now. <laughs> that adds, uh, adds to the experience. Indeed it did. Uh, but that is, uh, you know, that's another point. The, the, the reality, though, is that eclipses do become addictive. You've just heard, I've seen six, and I never expected to be to become an eclipse junkie, but I think mm. I'm heading in that direction, Pete. Well, the, ne is it the next one's in Spain, am I right? That's right, Gibraltar, uh, um, yeah, in southern right. Spain. Um, you might find me there then, too. OK, well, I look forward to talking to you then, too. Hey, Fred, what an experience for you. Thanks for uh, sharing some of that for us. Appreciate it.